personally when it comes to giving I consider it a service it's a, it's a major service and most of the people that the devil chooses to fight are people that are making contributions in the kingdom of God sowing is a service unto God so let's treat it as such with all reverence this is the reason why even most givers are in trouble because de the devil doesn't like it when you finance the kingdom when you are part of the success of any event that seeks to advance the kingdom of God the devil will definitely come after you that's why it's not enough for people to give it's important also for us to have a team that prays for the givers people that pray for givers because givers go through a lot we are all aware of the story and how David pursued the Amalekites and recovered all and without fail but as they were going to recover they go to the river Beso and two hundred men at that point fainted they were tired they were exhausted and from that point on these 200 men had no power to cross over to the other side of the river Beso. so they were advised by those that were strong to remain and to stay at the river and they stayed at the river, the 200 men, and David proceeded with the 400 men. And they overcame the enemy and they brought back the spoils. And as they were coming back to the river, and he saw these 200 men that they had left at the river, what David did was to salute. He is saluting the 200 men generals that had fainted 200 men that were not part of the victory that they got 200 men that never participated in the battle yet still David saluted the men that were left behind there's something that he knows about those that stay behind so we're going to investigate what is it that he knows about people that stay behind because you see a man of his stature he is not castigating them for staying behind he is saluting them they did not salute David as David was coming back David saluted them yet they had proven to be unqualified for this conflict yet still David coming back victorious still had to salute these 200 men and while this David was paying his respect to these men, these 400 men that had gotten victory, they also said, Sir, I don't think it's a good idea. We are not going to give these men any of our spoils because they were not part of the fight. The only thing we can probably give back to them is their wives and children. David said two things. First and foremost, two things. He said, who shall listen to this matter? Who shall believe in this concept? This idea that you are bringing up. Who in his right mind will ever believe such a thing? Because whilst you were fighting, these people that we left behind were in a certain fight that you are not aware of. That is about to explain now. Because now David is calling these men keepers of this stuff for who will hearken unto you in this matter mm -hmm. but as his part is that goeth down to now he says the part the salary that you get for being a fighter the man that stayed behind must be given the same amount the same share the same salary the one that fought the one that fought and the one that never went to war they should both enjoy the spoils 
is, as his part is, that goeth down to the battle, yes, so shall his part be mm -hmm. that tarrieth by the staff. That tarrieth by the staff. Uh -huh. They shall part alike. So what is he saying? David is saying, there are some of you people here today who when you think of a better reward, because you know at some point God will reward his servants, those that diligently served him wholeheartedly. There will come a day when men of God who did well shall be rewarded by God. And if you are interested in having such a reward, not being a man of God, what do you do? Because such a reward is going to force some of you to leave your job and you go to Bible college, all in an, an attempt to get a reward that men of God are eventually going to get. But David is saying, even if you were not involved in ministry, in terms of being on the front line, if you can stay behind even if you can't preach, but you identify the preacher and you know how to keep his stuff. Let him go around the world. You stay with the stuff. If you know how to manage his stuff, by the time he comes back, you'll get an equal reward. You'll be paid as a missionary without having visited a single nation on the face of the earth, but simply because you identified the man who was on a mission and all you did was to stay behind and taking care of his stuff. Are you following? Let those that are preaching preach. What if I'm interested in their reward? He who receives a prophet in the, in name, the of name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. The one who shall receive the prophet's reward was never a prophet. He received, he was rewarded with a prophetic reward without ever prophesying. No dream, no vision. No say, come here, my sister, come here. This is your name. In, all that that person did was to identify a prophet and receive not prophesy he received the one prophesy and what he got was a fair share the one that went and the one that stayed got the same reward and the reason why these men had to be given a reward it's not because they were doing nothing no when they stayed at the river though they were fainting with the little power left in them they protected the staff they kept the staff I wonder if I'm to have people here, how many can I have who are capable of keeping my staff whilst I'm preaching, whilst I minister, who is able to keep the staff of the warrior. That's a work, that's a job, and it's very spiritual. Being able to keep my staff you can't do it like me. And I also cannot do it like the way you, you do it. I have stuff that, need, that, that, that requires you to keep. And I can't be focusing on stuff. I have to focus on ministry. So somebody has to be anointed for that responsibility of the keeping of the stuff. And he will get the same reward you have never conducted the crusade. All you did was to keep the stuff. Take care of the stuff. The stuff. The stuff. These are principles of life. And some of these principles, for your own information, they have kept me this far. It just takes me time sometimes to share with you some of these principles that I've kept and they've kept me. This is how you participate. You, you become a shareholder in a company that you never started. This is how you buy, you own, you control shares 
in other people's lives identifying somebody who is well trained in his duties in his work and then you make contributions you take care of the stuff let them go and fight and you know that you have taken care of their stuff how can Jesus say that even if a man is to give you a cup of cold water you little ones a cup of cold water if it is to be given to you that man shall by no means lose his reward whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in only. the name of a disciple because we are what a disciple a disciple uh -huh. verily i say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward as simple as that identification of a disciple and all you do is to bring up a cup of cold water there is emphasis on that the condition of the water is important you would have done something to the water you make sure the water has the right temperature and you give it to a disciple there is no devil that can ever stop you from getting a reward for giving a cup of cold water to a disciple you might say but i've done it before and i never got a reward you have done what i've given a cup of cold water or maybe a cup of water was it cold uh, mine was cold was it a disciple he said, Verily I say unto you, you shall not lose your reward. This is how you tap into events that you cannot attend. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. I've told you, I have a man of God that I listened to. He was preaching, and I had a bit of wisdom, a bit of wisdom from what he was saying. And when I was listening to his sermon, I think well, it was the ninth time, oh, I can't remember exactly, but I just felt like I've listened to this man for too long, and it's unfair. Getting all this knowledge, all this wisdom from him, and I'm not in touch with him, I had to send him a seed. It doesn't have to be scripture, it doesn't have to be New Testament or Old Testament. I just say, if he has helped me this far with this level of knowledge, I don't know him, yet he knows my condition, that I needed this stuff, this knowledge. I'm sending him, he said, I don't, I, I'm not a member of his church. His father is in America there. But I, I started feeling like it's not fair. It's the same feeling that I get when I know that I did not buy this CD properly. And the artist is not benefiting and yet I'm consuming his product. It's the same feeling. It's, it's, it's the same feeling. I know some of you are blessed. You, are, you have over... <laughs> you are more mature. You don't care about all that. But it's a feeling that I always have. He's making me feel good. But what can I also do to make him feel good? Life is like that. Things are not supposed to be complicated. We should not be looking for scriptures every now and then. No. I'm looking for a cup of cold water just so that I connect. And I'm sending a seed with a letter. You have blessed me so much. I've listened to not more than 10 of your teachings on this subject. And you have helped me. And I can't be this better. And I do nothing. This is my contribution. This is my cup of cold water. This is my offering to you. And imagine, this is just ten, nine sermons. What is it with this God who is sending people to come to our city? He has given them the power to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and yet they don't have <laughs> a cup of water such a god who can empower disciples to go and raise the dead you see them coming with such an amount of power yet they lack stuff they have no cup of water it's a setup god knew 
there are people in that city who are never going to become disciples yet they require the same reward so i will create a situation of lack as if they lack just so that those interested in being a part of the disciples can find a need in them hmm? yes and once you participate i'm not saying this i'm not talking about myself i'm talking about youth please if you're coming here for the first time and you think he's talking about i'm talking about our own these little ones and mentorship is the shortcut to success shortcut most of the shortcuts are dangerous except mentorship Mentorship is when you begin to learn even through the mistakes of another. It's learning. The mentor comes and he tells you, don't do that because I tried it before. You see me bleeding today, it's because of that thing that you're touching. Mm. There is what they call electricity there. Don't touch it. And whoever tells you not to touch an electric wire, that's your mentor. Don't say I don't have mentors. I say mentor. <laughs> you are here today because of mentors that you have not been acknowledging. Mentors. You are putting on a tie today because somebody mentored you. You have a lot of mentors that have mentored you. Find ways of appreciating those people. A cup of cold water. <laughs>